gospel promises all the changes usually brought against us by those who try to slander our doctrines that we did not adopt the sentiments of the word of salvation without inquiry our adoption of belief in the greatest blessings is not uncritical as to time we did not forsake the superstitious errors of our fathers without sound reason primitive theology and phoenicians and egyptians character of the cosmology of the greeks philosophers opinions concerning the system of the universe the ancient worshiped no other gods than the celestial celestial luminaries knowing nothing of the god of the universe nor even of the erection of carved images nor of demons the stories about the gods among other nations are of later introduction <clears throat> theology of the phoenicians now those are the contents of the books okay chapter one by the present treaty which includes in its design the demonstration of the gospel I propose to show the nature of Christianity to those who know not what it means. And here, with prayers, I dedicate this work to thee, Theodotus, most excellent of bishops, a man beloved of God and holy, in the hope of so gaining from thee the help of the devout intercession on my behalf, whereby thou mayest give me greatest assistance in my proposed argument on the teachings of the gospel but first of all it is well to define clearly what this word gospel means to express it is this then that brings good tidings to all men of the advent of the highest and greatest blessings which having been long since foretold has recently shown forth on all mankind a gospel which makes not provision for the undiscerning wealth nor for the petty and much suffering life nor for anything belonging to the body and the corruption but for the blessing which are dear the blessings which are dear and congenial to souls possessing an intelligent nature and on which the interests of their bodies also depend and follow them like a shadow now the chief of these blessings must be religion not that which is falsely so called and full of error but that which makes a true claim to the title and this consists in the looking up to him who in every truth is both acknowledged to be and is the one and only god and in the kindling of the life after god wherein friendship also with him is in engendered and this is followed by that thrice blessing end of god's true favor which coming from one highs from one high is dependent upon that better world and is therefore directed and terminates again therein what then can be more blessed than this excellent and all happy friendship with god is not he both the dispenser and provider of all men of life and light and truth and all things good does he not contain in himself the cause of the being and the life of all things to one then who has secured friendship with him what more can be wanting what can be lack who has made the creator of all true blessings his friend who or who 
can be superior to him who claims in the place of a father and a guardian and great president and absolute monarch of the universe. Nay, it is not possible to mention anything in which he who draws near to in, in disposition of God, the absolute monarch, and through his intelligent piety has been deemed worthy of all his all blessing, all blessed friendship can fail to be happy alike in soul and body and all outward things. It is then this good and saving friendship of men with God that the word of God sent down from above like a ray of infinite light from the God of all goodness proclaims as good tidings to all men and urge them to come not from this or that place but from every part out of all nations to the God of the universe and to hasten and accept the gift that with all eagerness of soul Greeks and barbarians together men, women, and children, both rich and poor, wise and simple, not deemed even slave, slaves unworthy of his call. For indeed, their father, having constituted them all of one essence and nature, rightly admitted them to admitted them all to share in his one equal bounty bestowing the knowledge of himself and friendship in him upon all who were willing to hearken and who readily welcomed his grace this friendship with his father christ's word came to preach to the whole world for as the divine oracles teach God was in Christ reconciled the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and he came, they say, and preached peace to them that were far, far off, and peace to them that were nigh. These things the sons of the Hebrews were long ago inspired to prophesy to the whole world one crying, All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindred of the nations shall worship before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the ruler over the nations, and again tell it out among the heathen that the Lord is king for he hath also stabilized the world which shall not be moved and another saith the Lord will appear among them and will utterly destroy all the gods of the nations on the earth and men shall worship him every one from his place these promises have been long ago laid up in divine oracles laid up in divine oracles have now shone forth upon our own age through the teachings of our Savior Jesus Christ so that the knowledge of God among all nations which was both proclaimed of old and looked for by those who were not ignorant of these matters is duly preached to us by the word who has lately come from heaven and shows that the actual fulfillment corresponds with the voices of the men of old but why should we hasten on to anticipate in our eagerness the due order of intermediate arguments when we ought to take up the subject from the beginning and clear away all the objections for some have supposed that christianity has no reason to support it but that those who desire the name confirm their opinion by an unreasoning faith and an assent without examination 
and they assert that no one is able to clear dim, clear is able by clear demonstration to furnish evidence of the truth of the things promised but that they require their con converts to adhere to faith only and therefore they are called the faithful because of their uncritical and untested faith with good reason therefore in setting myself down to these treatises on the demonstration of the gospel i think that i ought as a preparation for the whole subject to give brief explanations beforehand concerning the question which may reasonably be put to us both by Greeks and by those of the circumcision and by every one who searches with exact inquiry into the opinions held among us for in this way I think my argument will proceed in due order to the more perfect teaching of the demonstration of the gospel and to the understanding of our deeper doctrines if my preparatory treatise should help as a guide by occupying the place of elementary instruction in introduction and suiting itself to our recent converts from among the heathen but to those who have passed beyond this and are already in a state prepared for the reception of the higher truths the subsequent part will convey the exact knowledge of the most stringent proofs of god's mysteries dispen dispensation in regard to our lord and savior jesus christ let us then begin the preparation by, uh, preparation by bringing forward the arguments which will probably be used against us both by Greeks and by those of the circumcision and by every one who searches with exact in inquiry into the opinions held among us. Chapter 2 for in the first place only one might naturally want to know who we are that have come forward to write are we greeks or barbarians or what can there be intermediate to these and what do we claim to be not in regard to the name because this is manifest to all but in the manner and purpose of our life for they would see that we agree neither with the opinion of the Greeks nor with the customs of the barbarians. What then may the strangeness in us be, and what the new fangled manner of our life? <clears throat> and what the new fangled manner of our life? And how can men <clears throat> fail to be in every way in impious and antheistical who have apostatized from those ancestral gods by whom every nation and every state is sustained or what good can they reasonably hope for who have set themselves at enmity and at war against their preservers and have trust away their benefactors for what else are they doing than fighting against the gods and what forgiveness shall they be thought to deserve who have turned away from those who from the earliest time among all greeks and barbarians both in cities and in the country are recognized as gods with all kinds of sacrifices and initiation.